it's like I'm not making this episode to like glamorize and I'm actually going to be sharing with you guys some pretty scary experiences I've had um it, I haven't really been posting on there I do have the account I keep like activating it deactivating it just to like see you know just to see if I can make like a quick little bag you know just here and there um because it's there right so just to like see but just because it's there doesn't mean you should do it <laughs> that does not mean you should do it because now like I said in 2024 it is oversaturated there's they probably have over a million people on there now at this point selling content and the amount of times where I have been compared like people would message me after I would like send out a message blast where you send it to all your fans and send them all a picture and be like, oh, it's $10 to open this, $30 to open this, $100 to open this, but a minimum of $3 it has to be. And I would send something out and people would message back like, oh, well, at da -na 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 makes this exact kind of content and it's only $5. Why is yours a 30? Like it's, it should literally be like three bucks. Like, so there's so many people doing the exact same thing. And there's gonna be so many people in your messages telling you that you're charging too much and then it turns into this whole like what do I think I'm worth <laughs> like thing that you start spiraling into and that's very detrimental on your mental health and I feel like a lot of people don't talk about that because you have to set a price on yourself like on this platform you're setting a price for yourself like what do I think a picture of me with my shirt off should cost that just sounds like a crazy ass statement to even say out loud to most people, right? Like, what should I charge for bending over in front of the camera? Like, girl. When it comes to putting a price on yourself, that's a wild thing to even say. And I never really thought about it. And I appreciate Simply Nessa talking about this. When she mentions that you have to put a price on yourself, what do you, what do you charge to show the kitties? <laughs> kitties. <laughs> what, do you, what do you charge to show the breasts? What do you charge? What do you charge to show the kitty cat? What do you charge to bend it over, bust it wide open? What do you show to make it? What do you show when you show a man uh, doing something on your face? Splash. I mean, what is? What do you charge for that? What do you charge for a splash scene? Uh, what do you charge for two girls? Oh my gosh! What do we do for all of that? I'm just saying, you have to put a price on yourself as a human being and say, well, I think I'm worth $30. <laughs> Isn't it horrible that there are girls out there who say, I'm worth five bucks? Get this booty pic for five bucks? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Are we talking about the girls who say that they'll sell their bodies for free? Come to the free and then give you a PPV in the DM so you can beat your... <laughs> Hold up. But really, you have to really put a price on yourself in order to be an OnlyFans model. That is one. That's a, another way of dehumanizing yourself. I am worth twenty nine ninety. Like like I said, I, I think I've talked about this before. But let's take it to the furthest: a thousand dollars a month for people to see your cookies. You're a celebrity. You're. you're I'm not gonna name no celebrities. You're a celebrity. You charge fifty thousand dollars a month to see the see the see the cookies. Are you worth fifty thousand dollars? Are you worth a hundred thousand dollars? Is your cookie worth a million dollars a month? Is anybody going to pay that? You probably get one guy to pay it. Is it worth your reputation? Is it worth selling yourself to be nude? You can do that in a movie. That's the that's that's what the beauty of it is. Is when it comes to sex and it comes to nudity and it comes to selling your body, you automatically have to price yourself in the market. It's immediately dehumanizing. And I know people always talk about, it's freedom. It's, it's liberating. It's going to make me be free. No. <laughs> you put a price on it now. For, for other women who aren't selling themselves like that, because they're like, no amount of money is worth it. Some of y'all, there's some money worth it. Absolutely. And it's crazy because, it's, it's, because we always want to treat each other with dignity. But at the end of the day... <laughs> Are we saying all women's cookie got a, a box? And it's really that different from the women who say they want a high value man. Oh, slow down. We're not there yet. But I'm just saying, open your mind to it. Open your mind to it. You have to like decide, is it really worth it? Is it worth the risk? Because like I said, it's going to be on the internet forever. Like, 
it's going to be there forever. And unless you have a team or somebody that's watching or checking or has programs where they're scoping the, the internet, because a lot of girls have managers and they have teams that they're like making sure nothing's posted anywhere. Um, unless you have that, which you're going to have to pay them probably 30% of everything you make if they want to sign you because they have to see the potential. Um, if you don't have that, you're taking a very, very large risk, you know? So let's get into how much money I made. Cause I'm sure a lot of people want to know like, girl, how much money, what was the bag looking like? So I think the first time I opened my account was like 2000 and was it 2019? I think, was it the summer of 2019? I hope I'm not getting my math wrong, but I know it was during the summertime at some point, I think. <laughs> but I did it. I posted the link on my Instagram. I posted it on my Snapchat. And the first day, I think I made like, maybe like $5,000. And then every single day after that, for like two months, I made 1000 to $3,000 every single day. So I wasn't making millions, but I was still making my mortgage <laughs> and all my bills for the month every single day. So it definitely, it was a bag. And this was off of just posting like bikini pics and just like booty pics and stuff, right? Like still with underwear, you know, still with the clothing on, but, you know, still more spicy content. And then one day it just started trickling down from that one to 3,000 to maybe 700 in that day, then 500, then $100. And now I'm starting to lose subscribers. And I'm like, oh, shit, like, what am I doing wrong? So I start talking to my friends who also are doing this. Because keep in mind, I had friends, like at least five other friends that had accounts at this time. And out of all of them, um i would say two of them are still doing it like more seriously like as their like full-time like job basically um but it started trickling down and i asked them and they're like girl you got to start posting and showing more plain and simple they're gonna get bored and they're gonna leave and they're gonna move on to the next person who's showing more and doing more and that's just the realistic aspect of it and if you don't want to do more then get comfortable with the money going down or you're not making <clears throat> excuse me or you're not making any money at all so then i felt pressured to start posting like more top removed photos like kind of covering myself up but still a little bit more risque right and now i'm back up to making my one to three thousand a day again and then after like a week it started dropping again and i feel like i got so greedy like, un like, I was doing it just because I was curious because I saw, like, I had a friend that made, I think, $300,000. I'm not going to say who because, like, that's her business. But she made $300,000 in her first month. So I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, that's literally life-changing. That doesn't make it okay. And I, like, saying that out loud makes me feel some sort of way about myself a little bit because it's like, dang, girl, like... Like money, you valued money so much over like all your morals and all the things that you believed in before. But at that point in time, I like I said, I valued that bag and I wanted to see what I could make because like I said, in my eyes, honestly, I think it stems from growing up not having money because if I would have had a more stable, like financial childhood, um... I think I would have viewed money differently and I would have been a little less desperate. Like when I did it, I didn't need to do it, but I was like, oh, but what if like next year I'm, I'm flopping. This can potentially like, you know, like I'm just, I don't know. I just feel like I got a little desperate and I started like taking more and more off. And before you know it, I'm... I'm busting, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not busting no wide open, but I am like, she's out. Hey girls. Hey ladies. Meow. <laughs> she's out. <clears throat> and this is with the children. 
she's doing this with kids. Remember, keep that in mind. Now, the kitties are out. I keep saying the kitties. The kitty is out. The breasts are out. Now you got to get piped out. She said it herself she was greedy. You know what drives me so freaking nuts? I'm not even going to lie to you. And we'll talk more about this in overtime, but let's I'll stick with it. If I can remember, I'll get deeper into what I was about to say. I want to say this. When it comes to these OnlyFans models, the greed, it's the fucking greed. And we all have, we're all greedy in some kind of way sometimes. Well, I guess not everybody's greedy. We can all get greedy. Maybe I get greedy for the food. You know what I'm saying? I get greedy. We all get greedy in some kind of way. I just said we don't all. A lot of us get greedy in some kind of way. And what you start to compromise. Me, personally, I might compromise my health. She's comp <clears throat> compromising her whole body. She's compromising what her kids are going to see in the near future. Watching their mother bust it wide open. It's crazy because that love of money, it's, and I get it. It is a scarcity mindset to want to not want to be broke ever again. Because you will never feel like you have enough. Once you start getting to making real money, Guys, I'm not talking about 20 bucks an hour. I'm talking making that $100, $150 an hour for real, for real. You don't want to stop. You don't want to take breaks. There are people, yeah, there's people out there who are like, as soon as they get $100,000, they're stopping. They're not, they're not continuing. They're like, that's enough money for me for the rest of my days. You know, some people just, they, that's not how they are. But some people do have that scarcity mindset because here's the thing. And I'm not saying anything towards this young lady, but I am saying this. If you have no skills, you will always have the scarcity mindset. If, and let's just be honest. There's a thing, you know, called being a jack of all trades, but a master of none. You need to master something. It doesn't have to be um, being a doctor. It doesn't have to be being a pharmacist. You can master your craft in the restaurant business, in the hospitality business, in the HR business, in the corporate world. Wherever you need to do it, you need to master it. Because once your skills go, or once you're no longer useful to the group, you're always be fucked. And that is a scarcity mindset. She felt like she, I don't know how, she, let me say that. I don't know how she felt, but it seems as if she felt that she had nowhere else to go. She had to keep showing her butt cheeks in order for her to get forward in this life. Because I don't know if she felt like she didn't have any skills, but if she truly felt like she had the skills to make that same kind of money without having to show her feet. It would have been a whole different story. And that's what it really comes down to. I know that women in OnlyFans believe that because they have a nice little body or some guy likes it or there's some, cre there's some creep out there going to beat their meat to you, that you feel like you have some kind of talent or ability when you just really flat out don't. You have no real ability and no skills. Men, are all, men look at all types of adult things. Men look at everything from feet. Let's get real tonight. Let's get real tonight. Men look at feet, to hands, to knees, to elbows, to armpits, to lips, to bath water, to farts, to burps. Men are freaky, baby. Real freaky. Men are into a whole host of things. There are men who love to be spanked. There are men who are into, uh, was it masochism? Who like to be humiliated. There is Fendom, which I have a whole video on that if y'all check it out. Okay, on the worst, I told you the worst creator I've ever seen. You can go watch that video where she does Fendom, which is financially domination. There are the women out there who take men's money. All of it. Every bit. And men want that. Guys, uh, and it, uh, it's, uh, I think they call them financial pigs. Something like that. So men are into all types of things. So baby girl, you're just not special. In the, you don't find, do you, let, me, let me ask y'all a quick question. You ain't got to answer it right here, but listen. Do you not find that kind of revolting that there's a man who's willing to drink bath water? There's a man who will buy burps and farts? You think, you think that that makes a woman special? Yeah, so ask yourself, if you're on OnlyFans, do you feel special? Do you really feel special that some man is into armpits? <laughs> no. See, you're not special. You're not something great. That fucking money makes you a fucking slave. It makes you a slave. You can't be proud of that. You can't be proud of, man, I sell my body to men who look at disgusting, deplorable, deplorable things. Deplorable. These are the men that you would, you would not leave your children around. These are men that you would not leave yourself around. These are the bottom of the barrel men, and women want to get a bag from them. To, for what? Ask yourself, for what? To do what? 
buy a nice car, a nice house, stunt in front of your fans? Or is it the scarcity mindset? You're afraid of going broke because you know you have no fucking skills that will ever make you that kind of money. And that's why it is. I mean, we, everybody knows. The older you get, the money is. I, I want to make as much money as possible. Do not get me wrong. Do I want to make $3,000 a day? Of course I do. And am I skilled enough to do that? Of course I'm not. But there's certain things I wouldn't do. I wouldn't sell drugs to get there. I wouldn't sell poison to my brothers and sisters to do it. I wouldn't go something that goes against my morals. I'm not going to get on here and talk shit about crazy things. I'm not going to get on here and harass people on the streets for, for a view. I'm not going to go fuck with guys in the hood, have my life taken, trying to get a couple views for a little bit of money. I don't care how much money I make. I'm not doing that kind of stuff because that's against me. But I will say this. I will say this. If you find yourself in such a state, it only takes one wrong move to step over that line because we all got a line. And I'm not here to say I ain't got a line. There's a lot of things I wouldn't do, but baby, that's not how your soul gets taken. They don't do it that way. They start off like this young lady did. You start off in the bikini. That's how they get you. Hey, Trey, I don't need you to necessarily um, do this deplorable stuff, but can you do this one thing? Can, can you do this? Just, just, just go ask this girl over here on the streets if she, if she would, um, if, if she would want to have a, a sex with this young man. Just ask that question. You ain't gotta go too crazy. It starts to, it starts right there. And then you asking deplorable questions on the streets. Would you get hit from behind? Would you get a blowjob? That kind of shit. Asking inappropriate questions, offer of views. Next thing you know, I'm, I'm all outside of myself. But that's how it always starts. That scarcity mindset gets you to go, well, I'll sell feet, I'll sell feet picks for $10. That $10 drops to $9, you're freaking the fuck out already. So you're like, oh shit, I gotta, I, gotta, I gotta take off my clothes. And it's like, oh yeah, that's not enough. I need you to take off your clothes and get piped down. Okay. No, nah, I don't need you to take your clothes off and get piped down. I need you to get piped down by two dudes. No, nah, no, nah, I don't want that. Now I want you to be covered in that, that, that stuff. I want you to be covered in this stuff. Uh, no, 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 no. It's not enough for you to be covered in this stuff. I need you to do something with that stuff. Now, hold on. And then it starts getting grosser and grosser. And next thing you know, you're an escort. <laughs> hold up. We're going to be seeing you on the hub. Getting some things rubbed. You know what I'm saying? It always gets worse and worse. And that's all I'm saying. She says she got greedy. And I get it. We all get greedy for money. I mean, fuck, being a content creator, it's hard not to want to go to the next extreme. You want to be entertaining. You want to be funny. It's hard not to want to make a video on the same shit over and over and then get more and more extreme. That's how it always starts with money. That's why they say the love of money is the root of all evil. Not money. The love of money. Because the love of money will have you doing some deplorable shit. It will have you doing horrible things that you won't want to show your mother, your father, your brothers and your sisters, your friends, your family, nobody. You don't want nobody seeing this shit. And I always find it funny when it comes to the OnlyFans model. They're always quick to say, well, you know, it's not that bad. I'm, I'm happy of it. We remember the woman saying, my kid can uh, cry in a Ferrari. If you're so fucking happy about it, why don't you just talk about it freely? There are some women who do it, but it's very few. It's a very few select that talk about OnlyFans like, yes, I want to tell you about it. No, they want to hide it. And they know it's bad. They don't want people. Is it okay if your father looked at it? Ask yourself. You do OnlyFans right now. Would you be happy if your brother watched it would you be happy if your father watched your content would you be happy if some one of your best friends watched it one of your best friends who's the man would you be would you be happy with it would you be happy if they saw what you were doing would you be like yes dad i want you to see me get no you wouldn't because it's fucking disgusting let's just call it what it is it's fucking disgusting that's what it's always gonna be i don't care about getting the bag none of that none of that you've got to save yourself from that you got to I want to get into, <clears throat> excuse me, I want to get into another alley that has somehow become my life. And I haven't posted this kind of content in. Peep the game, fellas. Peep the game. Like a week now. And I don't know if I'm going to continue to post it because now I feel dirty again. <laughs> Like, really, like, that's just how I feel about myself. Like, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to say that about anybody else. That's how I feel about myself, okay? Plain and simple.
Let me vent. Okay. Um, I'm okay. So I'm part of this program on Snapchat called Snap Stars, and I'm verified on there, right? So posting on Snapchat before was just for fun, or some people would get brand deals. And now Snapchat is actually implementing this option. If you're a Snap Star, you can get brand deals. So that's starting in August, I believe. And some people are going to be like, oh, wet and wild. Like, look at this mascara, you guys. Swipe up right now. And it'll be like a shopping screen will like show up or something. Like they're setting this whole thing up. Um, but also for posting, you get paid because they're sticking advertisements between all of your Snapchats. So if you go on like bad baby <laughs> if you go on her snapchat account her she has like 300 slides okay she literally has like 300 slides every single day and then she ends it with something kind of like something a little spicy or if you notice at nighttime all these influencers are posting a spicy image or their feet i remember seeing tila posting her toes them dogs all over the spotlight page and i was like girl can you please put them away like what are you doing right <laughs> why are the dogs out every night i'm not even subscribed to you you just i'm scrolling and your the toes are there <laughs> so i'm like what's going on why is she doing this i wonder at this point i did not know why she was doing it. I thought maybe she just liked posting her pedicures and everything. And then I started watching her stories and I started seeing that show. why she was doing it. I thought maybe she just liked posting her pedicures and everything. And then I started watching her stories and I started seeing that she cannot post N-U-D-I-T-Y. You can't post anything 18 plus. But you can allude to it. You can post soft core stuff. You can post your feet. Because turns out what is the biggest fetish in America or in the world? Feet. Growing up, I always thought feet were the nastiest thing in the world. My dad used to make fun of me. I remember being a child and my dad telling me, you have some of the ugliest feet I've ever seen dead ass i'm not even joking right now yes my father and he would just come up to me and just grab my toes and be like "Ugh." so i remember being in high school and like doing dance class and having to switch from to my dance shoes and my toes would have to be out and hated wearing sandals i made sure i had a pedicure at all times oiled my feet because i was so self-conscious like i had to try to make them look good when in reality no one gave a fuck <laughs> But I was so like insecure about my feet and I found them to be just the most disgusting thing ever. So I just kind of carried that trauma <laughs> into my adulthood. And whenever I would see people posting their feet, I'd just be like, ew, feet. But I would never view it as like, a, oh, they're posting it because it's getting them more views. And they're also a snap star. So there's ads. They're making a bag, right? So I run a Back test. To the bag I literally thing. told Kelly. I said, girl, I'm going to try something. I posted like a hundred slides. <laughs> I don't even know what I posted. I'm being too real right now. I posted like a hundred slides of like memories, cute stuff, current stuff. And the last photo, I did a red gel pedicure. And I filmed myself doing a pedicure. And then the last slide was like the results. I'm going to, I'm going I'm to say my numbers. I'm not a celebrity. I'm not a popping influencer anymore. I wasn't getting crazy views on Snapchat. I was getting maybe like on average every day, 10 to 30,000 people watching my story before. I now average over a million. When I say OnlyFans girls have no soul, I mean, it really makes y'all have no soul. <clears throat> I understand maybe you're into the I can understand you being into the hush puppies. I can understand you being attracted to the backside. But why the hell are y'all so deep going for the feet? 
the feet are way past the cookie and way downtown. I don't get it. Why so so deep down? No, I really do get it. I'm gonna I'm give y'all some game. I'm a young, I'm a young man. I've been younger though. I've been into the deep, dark crevices of the adult industry. Very deep. Deeper than you can ever believe. So I know some of you men are gonna relate to what I'm about to say. See what happens when you get into the adult industry and you start looking at your first pair of butt cheeks, it excites you. And then you see your first cookie and you're like, oh yeah. You match the, the back side with the front side with some hush puppies. You like it all. I get that. We're men. At the end of the day, we're men. And so there's nothing wrong with liking a little bit of cookie. I get that. That's fair game. But what ends up happening is men, you start to feel disgusting. Just like she says she feels dirty when she sells her body. Men start to get disgusted with themselves because when you're every day, uh, every time you get home, you have to splash. Let's get real tonight. When you have to get home, you have to splash all over your hand, all over your covers, all over your sheets, your pants, your underwear, whatever you do. That starts to get disgusting, fellas. Having to fuck up every towel you got in the house. You have to take a shower every time you decide you want to splash. It's, 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 it starts to become demoralizing. You start to feel like a loser. And so what do you do? Now, this is where the fetishes start to break off. This is where men try to say, well, I won't look at them naked. Maybe I can just look at their feet. I won't look at all that. Maybe if I can just look at a girl's feet, that'll be enough. That's not bad. I'm not looking at them nude. I'm just looking at their feet. I'm just looking at her feet. That's all that's going on. So that's, why, that's why the fetish is so high, fellas. They always make it seem like because the feet connect to the leg, that connect to the coochie. Mm. It's because you get a lot of men who are so addicted that they go to feet. Because they try to make themselves feel okay with themselves because they're not splashing to a girl who's naked. They're like, well, I'm not cheating on my girlfriend. I'm just looking at feet. I'm not cheating on my wife. I'm just looking at feet. I'm just looking at her take off her socks. I'm just, you know, I'm just trying to get a little, you know, get a little extra. I used to be way worse. I used to look at the nasty stuff. The real sick stuff. Now I just look at feet. That's what it is, man. That's why feet is so high. It's not because it connects to the legs. It connects to the cookie. It's because feet make us feel better. We want to look at feet to make ourselves feel okay when we close our eyes at fucking night. That's what it comes down to. We can't help ourselves. Because when you become an addict... It takes over everything. It takes over your mind, your body, and your soul. You're fiend for it. Because it's the one thing that you can honestly get away with being addicted. If you're addicted to heroin, people are going to see that. If you're addicted to food, like me, people are going to see that. If you're addicted to the cocoa, people can see that. Over time, people can only see you becoming an addict. But when it comes to that, them butt cheeks, it's hard for people to see it. It's very hard for people to see it because every, it seems like every guy does it. But we can all do that in the dark, in the crevices of our home, in the dark, 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 dark corners. Nobody sees it. Then we go to church and <laughs> praise God. Our God is an awesome God. We all can do that. Show up to the party. Show up and do everything after we just got done beating it off. It's such a hard addiction to get over. So, of course, a lot of men go to feet. She went from 30000 to a million. And now she's going to further talk about getting the bag. There's a story that I didn't show you guys. I don't want to talk about it when it comes to this. She said at some point some guy offered her about mm, 30, $35,000 $35, for her to be an escort, pretty much. $35,000 $35, for her to get in that bed. And do what you got to do. That's why she shut down her OF in the first place. Opened it back up. Shut it back down. Ladies. Please know. The men that are on this site. That's why I say. You lost your soul. The things you have to do. And the things these men are going to try to get you to do. For that fucking. And it's, it's disgusting to say it for the bag. It's not for your bag. It's not for no bag. You have to 
give away something that was never meant for other men to see. Something that was meant for just your husband. You have to give that away to the creepiest parts of the world. I'm going to tell you something else too, ladies. These men that you're giving your body away to, these are not just your average everyday men. 89% of the men who are on there are married. These are men who are cheating on their wives. These are men who do deplorable things to a certain demographic. You know what I mean. These are the kind of men you need to stay away from. These are the kind of men who would do anything to get in some pants and hide it from their wife, hide it from their family. These are not men you want to fuck with. These are not men that you want to give your stuff away from because they're truly going to go to the darkest place to get you to do what they want. And it's just a matter of time. It's not if, it's when. When are you going to become an escort? Because to keep that money flowing like you want to, it's always going to, that's the beautiful thing, it's always going to go down. Even these little Twitch streamers out here that show their butt cheeks on Twitch, and you always think they're making millions and millions and millions, that money goes down. That's why they start to do things that are crazy. That's why they start throwing on, throwing on really small underwear, putting their butt cheeks right in the frame, baby. No respect! Until Twitch bans them for a couple of days. But they'll be back. And they'll find another loophole. Because they want you. And the sad thing is these young women are doing this to you boys. Boys! Because that's where it starts for most of us men. It starts when we're teenagers. So these girls who are showing all their stuff off. Yeah, you're, you're getting men in there. But you're also getting young men who are 13, 14, 15 not knowing that the rest of their life is going to be fucked up because they decided to watch you stream and they were, they were thinking it was cool. Next thing they know, they're looking at hush puppies out. Next thing they know, they got a booty in their face. And it's all for fucking money. It's all for fucking money. It's horrible. You are willing to ruin men's lives. And I'm not letting the men off the hook, but you're, not, you're, you're part of the fucking problem. There's people who say that stupid ass shit who are just quick to say, well, it's not my fault. They're grown men. No, not one. No, not all of them are. And two, yeah, I know you put the 18 plus thing, but damn, it takes some accountability. It's like a person who sells crack on the streets. And they're quick to say, well, I mean, I'm just selling it. But you're still part of the problem. What are we, Franklin Saint? You're part of the problem. You're not helping the community just because they say yes doesn't mean it's right. You take people at their worst moments. You think they're going to be able to just simply say no? No. And it's not like you're making it easy. You're promoting it. You're telling them to go see it. You're asking them to look at you. You're sending them things in their DMs saying, hey, do you want to see this tonight? I mean, what do you expect? Do you expect every manager to be like, oh, no, I'm an upstanding citizen? No, because b to be honest, let's talk about it, ladies. When you start an OnlyFans, you want the most desperate men. You're not looking for men of character. You're not looking for the top men who are disciplined. You need men to be desperate. Think about it. For you to make money off OnlyFans, you need men to fall. You need men to break. You need men to be addicted. That's the only way you're going to make money. Because if every man didn't do that, you couldn't make a dime. So quit acting like you're not part of the fucking problem. Because you need men in that state. You need them when they're having a bad fight with their wife. You need to be right there in their face. Being like, hey, daddy. Hold up. <laughs> Hold up. You need them to be at their worst moments. So you can make a fucking bag. What did she say? I just made six figures on my OnlyFans. Ooh. So sit back. We we do stuff in this life that's not good. And I know it's easy to say, well, I, I don't judge. We got to judge. Judge me. It's okay. It's okay to call ourselves out. Just like I get called out for being a fat ass. We got to call you out for the same shit you do. It's not right. It's not right for me to be unhealthy. It's not right for you to show your fucking body off. I do it for pleasure because I'm an addict to food. And you do it for money because you're addicted to money. We're both fucking horrible. We got to call each other out though and call it what it is. 
it's bad. There's no liberation. There's no goodness to it. Let's stop playing around the fucking bush and just look ourselves in the fucking face and say, something needs to change. You see the name. Something got to change. Something got to give. I don't want to die like this. You don't want to die a fucking OnlyFans model. You don't. I don't care what all these OnlyFans girls say that it's liberating. They like spreading them cheeks. They don't like it. It makes them feel dirty. I can say all the time that I used to love looking at the adult industry. I used to love looking at porn. I used to love getting deep into it. Yay, I get to see girls naked. No, it makes me feel thick, sick and disgusting. There was nothing liberating about it. The, the, the dark shit I used to do to see this, man. It's horrible. And I never feel like I've ever escaped it. I never feel. When, you, when you're scrolling on Facebook, Instagram, whatever, you always run across some girl shaking her ass. It's so fucking hard, man. And of course you want to dive in. I'm not perfect. Do I ever get caught on a video when I'm scrolling? Because I saw some cheeks? Yeah. It's a problem. That's why I try to keep myself from doom scrolling. Because it just takes one time and I'm right back in it. Right back in it forever. And I don't know how it's going to end. You know, I used to know drug addicts. And they used to sometimes... Not sometimes, but sometimes people would go back to the drug. Sometimes they died in overdose. They go back one time, and next thing you know, you see them coming, and you see them just skits the fuck out, and next thing you know, you're reading about them because they overdosed and died. It's the same thing with porn. It takes one booty pick, one thing to get you set off, and you'll be right back where you started every single night trying to get out, and those demons are going to crawl into your soul, man. It's so fucking hard. It's so fucking hard. And let me tell you all this. If you think marriage or having a girlfriend, I was talking to a young lady the other day about this. She said that sex would save her marriage, right? Because she thinks sex is something that would hold together marriage. Ladies, sex ain't going to do shit. That's why sex is so horrible. That's why it's such pornography has ruined us because we really think that because we can have good sex and make our moan just right. That it's going to save us. It's going gonna, it's gonna to save all those feelings of pain. It's going to save all those tears that we cried. It's going to save everything. It's going to make things so easy. It's going to keep him from hitting you anymore. Guys, it's going to keep her from hitting you anymore. It's going to keep her from calling you all types of words that makes you feel so fucking angry. You feel like you're going to break a fucking wall in half. Ladies, you think it's going to keep him from making you feel like the worst you ever felt. It's going to keep you from drinking. It's going to keep you from having a party so fucking hard so you can push down the pain. The sex won't do it. I promise you it won't stop anything. It's only going to end one way for you. OnlyFans will take not just these ladies' souls, but men, it's going to take your soul. And for you men out here who are always sitting there saying, oh, well, I want to support her because... She's being liberating. She's being herself. And that's how the devil gets you. He ain't got to say shit to you now. <laughs> All he has to do is make you believe. <laughs> All he got to do is get you to believe. Some stupid shit like that. Have a fucking backbone, man. Have a fucking backbone. And stop trying to get into a girl's fucking vagina. <sighs> because that's the only reason y'all ever stand up for these women. It's because you want a piece of that cookie yourself. Motherfucker, you're not getting it. If you got to go to, you got to go against your fucking self and everything you believe in just because you want sex, you're a pussy. At the end of the day, it is what it is. I'm sorry to be so vulgar tonight, but we got to call ourselves out. We got to call ourselves out. And for you men who date OnlyFans models or marry these OnlyFans models while they're still OnlyFanning, you're also a punk, a chump. You're scared, a coward. To let your lady put herself in a place to show her body to the most deprived men walking around, you're fucking sick. You're sick. Something's wrong with you if you want to put your woman in a position where she feels like she has to sell her body for a bag. And give herself over to the most evil parts of men. We we're going to tell her to do disgusting stuff. You're proud of that. Congratulations. But you're, you're sick. 
I just find it hard for me. It's hard for me to believe that there are the men out there who say, yeah, I love my wife and I let her do OnlyFans because I love her. You're fucking lying. That's the worst thing you can do to her. That sounds like something you would do to somebody you fucking hate is to throw them into the porn ring. You, do you know the sex trafficking ring that uh, exists here in America and other countries? Where do you think those girls go? Where do you think those women go who are sex trafficking? You think they just go to the streets? Oh, no. You see them on your little hub.com. That's where the fuck you see them. You see them on OnlyFans. And you're okay with supporting that. You're okay with that. Shut the fuck up. <laughs>